My hair doesn't. My hair doesn't flip yeah, forward. Yes, my hair doesn't flip forward. Or do a little. Jake was gonna give me a. Uh, What's up, you bunch of? <laughs> <laughs> Excuse my French. Okay, socials. Follow all of, follow us on all our socials at Real Talk W R T. And then what? Yeah, give me a whiteboard. Uh, make sure y'all are following us on all our socials at Real Talk WRT on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and Spotify. For boys. That one. Tonight we had Tony Losey on the pod. He's a former pitcher here at UGA, now playing for the Rockies in Double A. Um, we talk all things from baseball, Halloween candies, and Ben Cleveland, which got really interesting. Um, tune in to hear all of us, all of the uh, interesting stories and good talk we had tonight. The intro is going to be a hit. Now that coach up in Athens got them boys playing pretty good ball. Anyway, I love you, son. Go, dog. Is this bad boy rolling? Yeah. I'll miss my school. Basically, dude, like, there's no formal way for us. We just kind of just okay. roll. So you were born in uh, Columbus, Georgia. Yep. Right? Grew up, went to uh, Houston County with old Jacob Fromm. Talk about playing ball early on. And I got into baseball. Yeah, so my dad actually pitched for the uh, Chicago Cubs. And uh, so growing up, I've always been in the baseball household and uh, loved the game. And, you know, I've been playing since a little boy. My dad's my coach all the way to 12. Actually, I grew up in Columbus, Georgia. I went to Hardaway High School my freshman year and uh, had a better baseball opportunity in Houston County. So moved to Houston County, and obviously I met my best man at my wedding, Jake Fromm. And, uh, it was, it was funny at first. We kind of butted heads at first. Two alpha males don't always hang out in the same area, and uh, so we had our ups and our downs, and uh, we had to get over ourselves. And ever since then, we've been best friends. But playing baseball at House County was unbelievable. It came off of a championship in 2016. I came in 17, and we ended up winning one. They had one four. They won one in 14. I came in 15. We ended up winning it in 16. That's crazy. So what were y'all like six, seven, seven, eight, six, eight? seven, eight. We're seven eight now, we're six eight at the time. Which was the highest at the time. Um, it was the highest at the time. We played Loganville back to back, lost and won it. They're a really good program. But ever since then it's been a staple. I mean, I'm here from Houston County. We got three kids on the baseball team currently at Georgia from Houston County. Jaden. Yeah, we got Jaden, Tanner Knowles, and uh Tanner Knowles, I know he went to Houston County. Yep, he's from Houston County, but he went to Perry and uh can't think of the other What was it like going from your you know, leaving your freshman year high school to your to Houston County, what was, the, what was the biggest difference in those two? Well, it was a huge transition because I left my family behind. And I'm a 16-year-old kid running wild and free with a family friend just to play baseball and just to have a better opportunity at winning the state championship and getting drafted high as a baseball player. So, I mean, it was, it was definitely difficult, but I loved it at the same time. It helped me grow up. And, uh, you know, I had, I had almost grow up at 16 away from my parents and – People I was living with, I could have done whatever I wanted to do. I'm not their kid. Yeah. They loved me like their kid, but at the end of the day, they wasn't going to spank me. <laughs> you, you know what I mean? It's like, what do you do? Yeah. So I was just wild and free. Talk about wild and free. Hit on the uh, the old paintball incident. For yes. us. Tell us that, that good story. Yeah, junior senior wars in high school, we did it every year. and It was funny. I was a senior and Jake was a junior, but me and him would always roll together and would fight both sides and would never know it's us. And... So I like to freeze paintballs and it happens every year there, TP houses and shoot kids and houses and families. And thinking about it now, I mean, like I said, young, wild and 16, it's fine. But now that I own a house, if somebody shot my house, I'd be really mad. You know? Hold on, freezing paintballs. You never froze paintballs? No. No, I don't recommend it. <laughs> don't, hey, hey, don't be on the other end of it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, just think of a BB, but think of a bigger BB. I mean, it's going to hurt. Like it's going to do some damage. Oh, yeah. I got shot. But anyway. We're sitting in the car and we're shooting, shot these houses up. We're hauling butts to the next house and the car comes behind us with no lights. And we're sitting in the car. Two of my buddies stick their guns out of the window, light the car up and next to know it's blue lights. We shot the wrong car. <laughs> now we're pulled over, everybody's in handcuffs. And this is not going well. <laughs> I, was, I, was, I was projected first round draft pick that year. I just came off a great season and I just saw it ending right there. And the uh, only thing I can think of is I'm looking around, I'm the only guy in the car with a scholarship. I'm the only guy in the car has a chance to make a lot of money in the draft that year. And uh, luckily we got away with it. Cop understood, he knew what was going on, but it kind of gave us a wake-up uh, wake call about uh, 
don't shoot at cars. If you can shoot at a house or a kid, that's fine, but God, do man. not shoot at a car. I mean, it's honestly true. If we, I mean, Athens has some real spots. If we did it here and shot the wrong car, we might get actually shot. Oh, yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, Golly. I mean, dude, I can. one of the worst feelings is, is driving in a car and you see those lights come on. I can't imagine taking a paintball gun and shooting at it and then seeing the lights come on. I mean, what are you going to do? Throw it out the window? He got you. Yeah, I mean, we're dead. Yeah, we're done. dead. <laughs> you done, but, done. Yeah, that was fun times. We had a lot of good memories. Did a lot of dumb things. Young, wild, and free. Got a lot of baby. Talk so you were, uh, at that point, you were already, were you committed to UGA? I was not. So, George was always where I wanted to be. And our head coach was Scott Strickland and our pitching coach was Fred Corral at the time. And mm. I was actually committed to Georgia Southern my freshman year. They offered me a full ride scholarship and said, if I got hurt, I was still up for college. I didn't come from the wealthiest family, so if they were going to pay for my college if I got hurt, everybody was all in. Division one, free college, let's go. So it got to the point where I progressively got better, and uh, I was like, man, I got to get to a bigger school. I feel like I belong there and I want to go there, and Georgia was it. And I had seven full ride scholarships to seven Division One baseball programs, SEC included, wow. and Georgia was not one of them. And uh, Well, first of all, seven full ride scholarships in baseball in general, that's, I mean, that's a bag of yeah. feet, feet right there. Yeah, I think they get 11.5 or 11.7, yeah. so it was very special. and. Uh, so I had that, and I kept calling Georgia every week. They told me I had to decommit for them to speak to me. I decommitted from Georgia Southern. Now I'm uncommitted. I've taken four official visits, and Georgia still was not one of them. At what point are you in? Like, are you a junior? Where, no, I'm a senior. Senior. I'm a senior. I'm either going draft or college, and it's coming up in three weeks. Like, it's this quick. Well, I might have to go JUCO. Who knows? And you were the number one pitcher in Georgia too. So that's... I was. I was ranked number one pitcher in Georgia. I was like 17th nationally. Ranked and uh, I was a perfect game All American my junior year at Under Armour All American. Uh, played against a lot of great guys, a lot of guys in the big leagues right now. But anyway, getting back to the Georgia story, I was calling Fred Corral, the pitch coach at the time, every single day saying, This is where I want to go. And he would not give me a scholarship until I turned down the draft. Oh, are you kidding me? Not kidding you. And, and, when the draft came around, I had two weeks before I would report to college on Janu on July 5th. The draft rolls around, and I and I don't accept the offers I was given, and I knew I was going to school, and I called and said, hey, I just turned down the draft. I need a scholarship. I need a spot, and this is how much I need to come to school, and it had to be a full-ride scholarship. And uh, sure enough, they made it work out. And two weeks later, on July 5th, 2017, I enrolled in the University of Georgia. No, baby. That's awesome, dude. Yep. Talk about, um, so in high school, you were Under Armour All-American. Uh, you were, uh, let's see, Under Armour All-American, Perfect Game All-American, went to East Coast Pro, mm -hmm. Rawlings top, top list prospect. Um, you tossed a no-hitter on your senior night. Yeah. How insane was that? It was crazy. I mean, you got to think of our pitching staff. It, it was me, a kid that went to Mercer, a kid that's still at Gardner-Webb, and the guy's pitching the big leagues right now with the Boston Orioles, Steel Hall. And uh, we, I mean, it was a toss up. Like, who gets the ball in this night? Every kid's really good. And luckily, I got the ball and I had all my family there cousins, aunts, uncles. A lot of people came. And uh, I did. I think it was Wes Lawrence I threw it against. That's special, dude. No hitter. I had like 15 Ks that night. I still remember it. It was a fun night. That's unbelievable. Dude, y'all were stacked in high school. God, we, Steel Hall's a dude. Yeah. Dude. He's been pitched for a long time. All right, so we do a segment on here called Your Fist Pump Feature of the Week. So, Tiger Woods, known for his amazing putting, and we'll fist pump at the end of it when he sinks one. So think about a moment this week where something good happened and it was fist pump worthy. It could be your truck was running on two miles and you got five miles, you found, I don't know, an extra piece of gum in the in your truck, like whatever you, whatever you can think of. Tate, start us off, big dog. Well, Whoever watches this and everybody here knows that these slides are my favorite things ever. And I got a new pair this week. So that would be my fist bump feature of the week. After and it was delayed for, I think, three and a half weeks. And the new, the new shorts. I've had these. But had, had you, had you, tell us the Lulu story. The Lulu story uh -huh. from last week? Uh huh. Re I go into Lulu. Man like, loves Lulu. The loves shorts Lulu. are the greatest things ever made. Can't wear their tops, I don't have an opinion on those. They don't fit me. Um, I go in there, I'm about to buy a pair of shorts, and my girlfriend calls me. Hey, uh, you at Lulu? Yeah, yeah, whatever. Well, I put that gift card in your, uh, 
in your wallet from where I would return whatever I got from there. And I was like, how much is on there? She's like, $128. I was like, oh, no, grab another pair of shorts. <laughs> <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. God, the Lulu is so expensive, but so comfortable. That should have never started buying it. It is a problem. It's the only shorts I'll wear now. Really? Yeah. That's or it. Just They're very comfortable. They're great. Well, I'll wear them. I'll wear them somewhere else. Too. People are like, I'm never going to spend that much money on a pair of shorts. I was like, I said the same thing until I did it. Mm-hmm. They've got the underwear even better. Oh, that's, that's all I He swears by them. He swears by them. That's all I wear them. <laughs> <laughs> they're really, they're real deal. Yeah, they're, yeah, they're yeah. great. It's like the naked. That's, that's it's like the free ball. We're, Dude, we're this is verbatim. What we like, he talked about this a couple weeks ago. Verbatim. Yeah. Literally, you just quoted me. I might be. You have when to. that three thousand hits here in like a week from our uh, what's what's it called again? The uh, I don't know. Something money. Class, get paid yeah, money. something money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah, I missed that curve. I wish that was there. Yeah, there's Good a thing guys. now where if you are academically eligible for the next semester, you get paid three grand every sport. Every semester, walk on scholarship. How about that? And it's just fit into the budget yeah. for the school for the athletic department. How many athletes do we have on our campus? That's a question. Yeah, no, how many how many athletes do we have on our campus? Five hundred and fifty. Five hundred and fifty athletes across twenty one sports. Five hundred and fifty. Eating at varsity level at the University of Georgia. Yes. You didn't script that, did you? <laughs> no. <laughs> I said it so many times. <laughs> That's a lot yeah, of but money. how many is equestrian football hold alone? It has to be two, three hundred. Yeah, because equestrian is like the, the balance. Yeah, yeah the top Wait, nine. Equestrian? How many people does equestrian have? The reason why like y'all have football is because equestrian. I don't you know. Three three times, times. Really? Question, how many they have? I don't know, but, it's, but it has to be the same. Is, I mean, it, it mirrors football. Yeah, it has to be I, Title Nine. Wow. Yeah, 50th anniversary of Title Nine. There's a reason why we don't have men's soccer, right? Yeah, we don't. Because we don't have like bone of women's. The whole debacle at South Carolina was hilarious, dude. When they brought all the the, the girls out onto the field to celebrate every female athlete. Oh my god! And Beamer was like telling them to get off the field. <laughs> dude, I don't remember all, that. Dude, it was a bad deal. The stands were already in by, empty by then, so it was, you know, no one was saying anything. But that right. t- that towel waving is a lot cooler in videos than it is in person. Well, it'd be different if it was like a. Well, they did it in we kickoff. We were up 20, 28 nothing. That they did it in kickoff, and I was like, this isn't as cool as it looks in videos. Yeah. Tennessee's going to beat Alabama when Bryce Young's not playing. I'm with you. Spread seven and a half. You, don't, you think they beat him without Bryce Young? He's not playing? Well, they better. If they're going to beat him, it's going to be without Bryce Young. And they're not going to beat like, Bryce Young. I was going to say, you think they, uh, what I meant was, you think they beat him with Bryce Young? No, they See, don't beat him with Bryce Young. I don't Bryce care who's, who's starting quarterback. I'm giving him a chance because it's a Nealon. Bryce is going to be rocking. It's going to be hype. Rock You're talking about a high defense player that can I, run and throw. I think Tennessee wins that game regardless. What? Yeah, I think Tennessee. This Pendon Hooker dude. is really good. He's really Vegas good. is begging you to take Tennessee yeah. plus seven and a half. No, she knows. I literally. Who is that? It's, it's Brett. Brett. Hey, Brett. Come here. A little guest appearance with Aussie. Yeah, come on in, big fella. Come, come on here. In. Fire Flavor is a local Athens company that loves supporting the dogs. Founded by UGA alumni, Davis and Jenna Knox, this company is your go-to resource for all things grilling. They got dry rubs, barbecue pellets, charcoal, and the new and innovative Hero Portable Grill. Fire & Flavor gets it done. And find their products at fireandflavor.com or at your local Striplings, Publix, or Lowe's Home Improvement. Use their code TAILGATE, that's TAILGATE, for 25% off on their website. Again, their website is fireandflavor.com. Use the code TAILGATE for 25% off. Come say hey to the peeps. Kids from Australia. Give the people a shout out. Yep. Hits, come in here. Hits bombs. Nah, not, not, not like me in high school, no, but he hits bombs. Come, come, come stand right here. Yeah. Introduce yourself to the camera. Where are you from? What number do you wear? What position do you play? Hello. Um, I'm on the scene. Right. Uh, yes, yeah, sir. Um, I'm Brett. I wear number 92. And I punt when needed. Not a lot the first couple of games, but last game we were rolling. Yeah, <laughs> when needed. Not Hits bombs. <laughs> the fam, you, you were down here with the fam. Fourth down quarterback. When, when was the first actual football game you ever played? Uh, Oregon. Yep. How about really? that? Isn't that insane? Ever. Yeah, I knew that. In your life. I like said really like it. Actual snap of football for, yeah, ever. In your life. Yeah, first football game I'd seen also, like, let alone play. So. Really? Do you have a scholarship here? Yes. How'd that no, happen? he just he just came from Australia to Georgia without a scholarship. Well, if he's never played before in his life, how's he get a scholarship? Yeah, so basically, it's like a it's a it's a kicking academy, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, the uh, uh, Vandy has a left footed kid from Australia. It's a punter. Do you know him? Yeah, I met him up in Nashville when I went up there. 
So it was good fun. Come on. Be All right, brother. Yes, sir. Have fun with the fam. Appreciate it. First time he's ever been to the university. It's the first day he stepped on me. Never visited and everything. Imagine that. Must be overwhelming. Yeah, his family's here. He said his family's first game was the Auburn game. I was that's pretty thing. Good first game. Yeah. That was a good game. That was a fun game. Oh, that was a fun that game. game was a lot of fun. Yeah, that was. That was we had a lot of fun. <laughs> the old line. Especially that first. That? Our offensive line was playing well. That first play, or the first, like one of our first run plays where we knocked the pile like 10 yards, that's like we're, that, we knew we were like, all right, here we go. Gets the crowd. Moving. I think somebody upstairs did like an analysis of it. We had like, if you counted from when the first lineman made contact with the pile, we had like 30 yards rushing from pushing the ball. I thought they said it was going to be like an FBI raid. What they say before the game? What that one guy on the team said? Robert. Oh, it was going to be like a SWAT team. A SWAT team. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, SWAT team. Well, I control, remember that. If yeah. they can control on its screen. You, know you know what's even funnier about that? It's our third string center that has to play because everybody else is hurt. That was our third string. Yeah. So he's How they did. Horrible. He played horribly. <laughs> Ouch. Okay. Uh, Timo, what's your first pump feature? Something good for that. Um, uh, I hosted my first uh, Tony Losey baseball camp. Let's go. Covington, Georgia. It went really well. But it played here, Heath Holder. He's also with the Colorado Rockies. And uh, we did it do, together. You're going to do another one, right? Yep, doing one in Homerville, Georgia. And uh, yeah, it went really well. Kids liked it, got a lot of feedback, a lot of text messages out there. So. Thank you. You think that's something, you think coaching is something you want to do once you're done playing? I don't know. I hope I'll play for a long time, so probably not. But if I was to quit today, no, I don't think so. I'd start with getting construction or building and. Just something outside of my hands all the time. I mean, I grew up playing baseball my whole life, and I absolutely love it. And I love to pass down knowledge to younger kids, but it just gets to the point where it's like a money gig, and yeah. and I'm not into the, the baby and the players and, and baby the and the parents and the politics of it. Yeah, so I'd rather just be outside making good money, doing stuff with my hands. Heck, yeah. You know, have you all seen that video of Blake Bortles? The girl's doing an interview, and, he, and she goes, what would, what would you be doing if you weren't playing football? If I wasn't playing football, well, probably working construction and smoking heaters. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty safe. That's, that's pretty good answer, buddy. Sounds about right. Uh, my fist bump <laughs> feature of the week is, <clears throat> even though we didn't get them all last night, I'm going to say that Colson went on a concert last night. It was legit. It was fun. Hung out with the boys, saw a lot of people there. Good deal. Even though. Went to shake some hands, messed my pinky up. Yeah, Shane Pryor just went to shake some hands, shook a hand, my pinky just popped out of place. I looked at it and I was like, oh my God, that ain't right. Just popped it right back in, sipped the beer, and had a night. Oh, yeah. Coastal was okay in here in uh, 17. I was, on this, I was on this party bus doing fireball shots. Could not walk off of it. <laughs> <laughs> that was a fun night. That is awesome. And that was a fun night. I love it. What's he like? Coastal cool, cool dude. Oh, no, he's awesome. Yeah. He's also, you know, he used to sell merch for Al Dean. For yeah, Luke. Yeah, for, for, yeah, for Luke. Luke. Sorry, yeah. Luke. No, that, that's that how he got it. started. Yeah. Isn't uh-huh. that crazy? They were, they're both uh, Sigma Kai's. That's from right. Southern. Luke. Uh, yeah, that's a wild story. He was selling merch, singing a couple songs, releasing one, boom. It's like, it like, I can do this myself. Speaking of Al Dean. Well. I was going to say this, but speaking of Al Dean, there, there was a, because uh, Cole was a songwriter for the longest mm-hmm. time, wrote Chilling It, which was his first release. Aldi wanted it from him, and this one I was like, nah, no, this is my baby. At least it went to the top of the charts, and then from then on, it's just <laughs> taking off. He's done a good job. No. It's crazy to hear, like, like Ray's, like, come up and everything. Like, to come up, like, Dude, the music artists, industry music artists is, is, is crazy. Because they all moved to Nashville, like, country yeah. artists, and it's either hit or miss with that. Like, I feel like half the time it's luck. Like, there's people up there that can sing that nobody's ever heard before. Well, the same thing as you come to college. Yeah. I mean, if you're a one star or a five star, yeah. so you got to make your spot on the field. Yeah. So that's like their recruit there. It's like their college. Move up there. It's so deep. Try to sing. It's, it's all right. about connections. Exactly. Who you know. It's all about who you know. Yeah. That's so, everything. But like Ray going up to Nashville and then like saying, meeting Luke or yeah, Luke Combs. The day he went up. Yeah, there. the day he went up there and he was like talking about like. And that was before Luke was even a dude. It was just yeah. the two being best buddies writing together. Crazy. I mean, Logan. Luke yeah. Combs' wife used to date. Um, John Langston. Really? <laughs> That's how they met, doing tours together. Wow. <laughs> they don't do tours together anymore. Golly. 
<laughs> you can cut that, he'll kill me. <laughs> oh, that's funny, man. Um, Bobby, give us your, uh, give us a little juice on the fist pump feature of the week. What you got? Oh, boy. This is unprepared. Um, I'm going to have to say the Braves one last night. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, just, just phenomenal, phenomenal win. Shut out. Um, yeah, give us give us a real shot against the Phillies after after dropping game one. So. Speaking of speaking of the win last night, we were at the concert and Cole starts singing "You Should Be Here," which is about his dad, a really sad song. At the time that Matt Olson hits the single to right and we score two, the entire place starts chopping in the middle of the song. He stops the song and he was like, "The brace better be damn up if y'all are doing that during the song." Everybody went crazy. He was like, "All right, let's pour a shot, pour a shot." The entire band took a shot, gave the chop, and then sang the song over again. It was awesome. It was it was electric, dude. <laughs> the place was bumping. Um, so, very call the Braves. I like it. Speaking of pro baseball, you get drafted. So you come here, uh, played here for four years, right? You played all three, three. years, three, three, three years. Um, get drafted by the Cardinals in the third mm-hmm. round. Talk about that process and going through the draft and what was that like for you? No, it was fun. I didn't know where I was going to fall. I mean, I could have went first. I could have went last. And uh, I was coming off a historic of the year. Uh, I was the first pitcher at Georgia in 11 games since 1990. Um, I was throwing the ball really well. We made it all the way to a regional. Um, I'm also the only pitcher to win back-to-back regional games really? in the history of Georgia. I won it in uh, 18 and 19. And uh, so that was really fun. And the draft came around, and I was selected in the third round by the uh, St. Louis Cardinals. Went down there, had a half a year with them. It was really good. I came back for the offseason here in the 20. I'm at – a couple of baseball players that play here now. I'm at their house playing poker at 1.30 in the morning. And uh, it's really late. And I get a phone call from our farm director. And I look at it. I'm like, this, this can't be good. So I answer the phone. And the only thing he says is, you know, we thank you for everything. We wish you the best of your career. You've been traded to the Colorado Rockies. I'm like, what? That's it? Yeah, that's hang it. Up. No, what? he didn't hang up. I'm like, what? What's going on? He's like, you know, I can't give you many details. You're the player to be named later. So you're the final deal. I just want to notify you because it's going to hit it's going to hit the media in five minutes. That's what he told me. I said, okay, well, who was I traded for? He said, Nolan Arenado. So that made it a little bit better. And, uh, yeah. So Hall of Fame third baseman, I, I guess the Rockies really wanted me to give him up for me. But Heck yeah, it's sick, dude. It was fun. And then the next two days, I was on the phone for sun up to sun down, talking to those guys. And shipped off the spring training. Here I go. And, I mean, it was totally different. He was blind. You know, I love Florida. I was in a great spot down there. And now I'm going to Arizona. I don't know anybody there. Lucky I knew Aaron Shunk. I played with here. Played with him all last year. So that's really about the only guy I knew going into a new organization. But what was the biggest difference between you know Florida spring training and Arizona? What was the, the feel? Obviously the weather's a little different, but the so in Florida spring training, you know it's humid, it rains. It's Florida. We'd get there at 5:30 in the morning, and we'd be out there by one. And uh, I thought that was awesome. We'd go to the beach, we'd hang out. I was on a boat catching mahi almost every single day. I had the hookup down there with a the guy that had the boat. And, uh, That's the life. Arizona, I mean, it's 100 degrees, but it's dry. And we're there a little bit later, about 8 o'clock to about 4 o'clock. So we really don't have time to do much. But none's different. Same competition, just different team. And uh, You prefer one or the other? I prefer Florida. It's closer to home. But, you know, I do love Arizona. It's really nice. And making the drive sucks. Me and my wife, we drive 26 hours there. We did it last year nonstop. So Golly. Nonstop. Nonstop. With our golden doodle. That, thank you. So when she sleeps, I drive. When I sleep, when I'm asleep, she's You're, driving. Gotta be, gotta be your sleeping, truck, I'm right? Driving. Yeah. All right, I was about to say. Golly. Yep. Got our golden doodle in the back. We'll stop for gas. Stop letting him out. Feed him. He's the man. He goes everywhere. The drive year. all the way to California, Spokane, Washington, Harbor, Connecticut. All the way back to Georgia. Golden doodle. Mm-hmm. He's a year and a half. I just got a dog a year ago. Not to. Like a couple of days ago, it was a year ago. Dude, I want one so bad. It's the best purchase I've made since being in college. Was, we were just training. Them. A little pit bull. That's awesome. <laughs> I don't want a pit bull. I got a golden doodle, man. I got, I got, a, I got a golden doodle. Back my, my dog gets yours to be about <laughs> plus eight hundred million money line. You know what yeah, I mean? <laughs> at least. We, we got a, we got a golden doodle back home. My parents. Did. I got a mini golden doodle but back home. That he's like an old person's dog. He's out. <laughs> he's all on wheels. I love it. Yeah, but you just hand it off to Anvil to take care of you. Just well, enjoy she, he's fine when she's with her, but as soon as I show up, it starts going nuts. That's why I remember walking into y'all's house when we had the same class last year, and 
I'd walk in and a dog would just go crazy on me as soon as I walked in. Oh, yeah. Hey, Alright, so. It'll uh, just run up to you and lick you to death. <laughs> the dog That's what mine do. <laughs> the dog <laughs> won't even bite change. It's a little bit more intimidating when a pit bull's running at you. I mean, <laughs> if I change my approach just a little bit. Alright, so. Um, talk about your. You're with Double A now. Kind of talk about your walk through the ranks so far and, you know, what you're hoping for this year. Yep, so I started off in high A last year. Uh, Spokane, Washington, had a really good year. How was your, uh, sorry to interrupt you, how was your relationship with your manager there? Talking about that story about uh, driving back after the game with your fiance at the time. Yes, I mean, we had an okay relationship. He just, same thing, two alpha males, you know. I, I was throwing really well at the time, and, and he felt like, I don't know, he wanted to assert dominance on me and whatnot. But so I'm in Spokane, Washington, and it was snowing our first day, and we're headed to Oregon. And we played at Universal Oregon's baseball field. And uh, so my wife's with me, it's snowing, it's, it's bad weather, and she has to drive by herself, I have to take the bus. So I go to him, like, hey, I really don't feel comfortable letting my wife drive alone. You know, do I mind ride, you mind if I ride with her? And he said, no, you're going to be on the bus. And I've already asked him previous times if I can ride with her. And it, I mean, it was just snowing, I was like, you know, it's time for me to make a grown man decision. So I'm loading up the bus and I go, and now I'm getting in my truck. <laughs> He'll never know, screw it. He drives himself, why can't I? Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I get in my truck and we're driving. We're driving while I gotta get gas. As soon as I pull over and stick the pump in, here he is pulled up right beside me. <laughs> and we both looked at each other like deer headlights. And, uh, and you should have seen both of them. My jaw dropped, so did his at the same time. <laughs> and uh, so oh, I mean, it was, it was fine. Uh, we didn't speak at all. It was more of a, we both can get out of here. And uh, so it was fine. I mean, two weeks later, I was shipped off to Double A, Hartford, Connecticut. So I guess it worked out. Oh, man. Dude, talk about two opposite ends of the Dagum country. Yeah. Goodness gracious. Oh, yeah. yeah, so I, I, was, I caught a flight, and it actually took me about almost the whole day to get there from Spokane to uh, Hartford. And my wife actually drove all, all through the night just to see my first Double A start. And uh, so that was trooper, good. Man. Yeah. She's a trooper. Yeah, that was good. She got to see my first double A start. And, uh, what was that like? Do well. I mean, the same. You know, everybody told me same game going in, this and that. And I just came from the Pacific Northwest League, which is probably the worst league in baseball as far as umpires, as far as the snow. It rained every single day. It's freezing cold. It's 20 degrees. And now I'm in the I'm in the heat in late June, in July, and. Got to make the arm feel a little better right there. Yep, felt good. Always good. Jacked up. Ended up giving up five that game. But I actually threw well. A lot of cheap hits. And I'm walking out going, are you kidding me? Yeah. Like, I'd rather somebody square me up than hit two bloopers and score a run. It's kind of like last night when uh, Austin Riley got an RBI, yep. swinging bunt. I mean, it happens part of the game as a pitcher. I mean, that's like your worst nightmare. It's like, he really meant a bomb there to do that. You know, that's earn it one thing. time. But, Heck yeah. No, it was fun. Um, I was having a good year, kind of got a little hurt, kind of set me back. You know, I'm not the guy to go to anybody, so I kind of pitched through it and had a lot of struggles, a lot of ups and downs, but finished really strong, came back healthy, so. So finished the double A, what are you, you know, what are you looking forward to this year? What's kind of the, so how's, I, how's the arm feeling? Feeling good, I'm actually back here now working out and uh, training at Georgia and uh, have a really good shot to debut in next year, which is gonna be pretty exciting. That's so. awesome. Congrats, dude, that'll be, that'll yeah. be sick, dude. Yeah, I can't imagine. You know, I was in Double A this year. I saw four of our guys get sent to the big leagues, and I mean, it's kind of cool. I'm our manager. I played 15 years of big leagues, and you can always tell at the end of the game when he walks around, kind of weird, something's up. And uh, I can't tell you how many times he threw a baseball. I was like, "How do you feel? Like you're starting tomorrow? Like, don't give me that shit. You know what? You're going to the big leagues, and everybody's going crazy. And uh, you get goosebumps just talking about it. And uh, you next it's everybody's year? dream. God, dude, that's awesome. That's awesome. That's what, that's what gets me about baseball. Like, NFL, you get drafted, you're there. And making millions. Mm -hmm. I've made $22,000 the last three years in my league. Like, so, the wow. Rome, I'm from Rome, Georgia, the Rome Braves. Yep. And my neighbors, like, housed their play, some of their players every year. That's nice. just, just because it, they didn't get paid anything, really. I mean, this is the first year in the Marlies they paid for a house. I paid $4,000 mm -hmm. for a house in the hood of Fresno, California. <laughs> And I was making two thousand dollars 
a month, maybe twenty five hundred a month. I was paying four thousand to live in the hood. And that's all I could afford, and that was actually the cheapest thing at the time. Was four thousand dollars. That's insane. So I, I was just burning money out of my own pocket. And I've heard it all. It all depends on the system you're in too. Like I was talking to Ben Harris the other day, and he was saying they have a, a chef that travels with them. And yeah, that was the Dodgers. An, an A ball. Was that like were you guys eating ham sandwiches out of the Walmart or like? Worse than that. We wish we had that. I mean, we had a lot of bad food. And a lot of bad food. All the fruit's gonna be gone right at the beginning. If you ain't the first one in line, sorry, you might as well not go. That's another thing, buying food. I mean, we had to eat. We had to do a lot of things. They just signed a new CBA for us, so I don't know what it's gonna be for the minor leaguers, but they pay for housing this year. That was kind of nice. That's nice, dude. That's big time. Yeah, but I, I tell people all the time, they're like, oh, you play baseball, pro baseball. I'm like, yeah, minor league player, Colorado Rockies, whatever. They're like, God, that guy's a millionaire. Oh, yeah, I'm drinking. <laughs> said, yeah, we're both drinking, but I'm like, look, man, I made $22,000 in six months. I come home and have to train. I don't even got time to get a job. They're like, how That's do you insane, do it? That's insane, dude. <laughs> I've seen some of my own buddies have to quit because they couldn't afford it, and their parents have forked so much money since they were 12. I mean, money runs out at some point. Mm -hmm. I mean, it has to. And people don't realize, dude. That, I mean, that's... That's right. That's where it's, baseball is so different than any other yeah, sport. It's definitely a grind. A guy in our organization, Wynton Bernard, he actually made his big league debut this year. It's a great story. He's played 10 years in minor leagues. We thought we had it bad in the last three. I mean, go back seven. They had it worse than we had. It was peanut butter and jelly, and that was it. Be lucky. You've got a piece of bread. How do you grind that out for 10 years? 10 guys, years. Man. Golly. Finally made his debut. Paid off. There's actually a, a, a video went viral when he FaceTimed his mama and told her, you know, he said it to the big leagues and she didn't believe it. And they both started crying on FaceTime. And Dude, those stories are so freaking legit, man. It'll give anybody chills whether you like the sport or not. Oh, yeah. That's crazy, crazy, man. Golly. Like, all the first rounders on our team last year making oh, $34 million? Yeah. $33 million. I got to play bonus? 10 years to make that money. Because your first three years in the big leagues, you're, you're making 700000 All right, you're thinking 700000 is a lot of money. It is. But those guys live a lifestyle where if we want to get a steak, we'll probably get a Longhorns and pay 40 bucks. They're going to Roos Fist brand 400. You got to understand the lifestyle that they're living. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you're walking in a room where the guys play 20 years. You're not going to Chick fil A as good as Chick fil A is just for a snack. <laughs> it, I mean, they're going to Five Bar for a snack. You know? It's insane, dude, man. Like, it, I mean, the lifestyle they live and the travel it, uh, is yeah. unbelievable. Well, that shows how big the gap is, too. Those guys that have been there for 15 years. Are making 200 300 mil you get guys making 700k which you know sounds like a lot of money but when you're doing that it ain't you know you gotta be smart and save it because it goes quicker and you make it how does it work for baseball do you get so i know for football you get paid during the season is the same way for baseball you mm -hmm. get paid yeah, so they're, yeah they're gonna make 700 grand during the season obviously they'll get taxed on it on how much they're taking home how much they're spending so they're, only gonna, they're gonna make that for three years the average lifespan of a major league pitcher is two so if you make it past your three years when you go to arbitration, and that's when you sign your contracts. Mm. But then right off the bat, I mean, they might give you a $3 million deal. You know, the Braves are locking up all their young guys right now. Years. And they're making money you've never heard of. After the Juan Soto deal, the new CBA they just did, I really think we'll see a billion dollar contract the next five to 10 years. Definitely in our generation, we will see a billion dollar contract in the major leagues. No way. We got to. A 10 figure deal? We got that's to. That's crazy. What? We got to. Everybody was mad that Bryce Harper of the Phillies got paid because at the time when he got paid, I mean, it was like four or five years ago, he was the highest paid one. Mm -hmm. He was like a three hundred fifty, maybe four hundred million dollar contract. You understand? He's selling tickets, he's selling jerseys. He's not getting that money. The team is, so they're making that money back. It's a great point. It's definitely a great investment. Same with Juan Soto got a five hundred million dollar deal. I mean, he's twenty one years old. He's younger than I am. He might be twenty two now. That's insane, dude. I didn't think about it too. Like, yeah, they're definitely selling it for his name. Like, Absolutely. he's drawing half that crowd in Philly. You know what's crazy to me? Jamari. Yeah. What round pick was he? Seven? Who you talking uh, about? Jamari Sawyer. Fitz was the last one, so he was, Fitz was in the sixth. Okay, so, so fifth or sixth. he is starting. Oh, he's making a check every game. Yeah. He's starting. So Monday, Monday. Grading out higher than any tackle in, in pass pro rating. Still on his rookie contract. So that yeah. means the Chargers? Are getting a deal with him right now. Oh, yeah, he's also getting some kickback. He's not only making that small yeah. minimum pay. Yeah. There's no what. No. Look, look at uh, Tay Crowder. Dude. Mystery relevant. He freaking starts with the Giants. And just hit. Yeah. yeah. I was. The uh, video hitting Derrick Henry what two or dude, three weeks ago. I mean, he's hitting a grown man. 
Some Roll said, man. Somebody <laughs> said Tank Router just showed Derrick Henry what it's like to get hit by Derrick Henry. Yeah. <laughs> also, he ain't we were, lying either. We were on the bus on the way, way back from one of our scrimmages, and this is Tay's third year in the league, right? Tay, so, yeah, he got drafted in like 19. Yeah. yeah third year. So uh, we're sitting there, and Schumann's talking about how just Tay's story and how he, he got to where he is. And he said each year the Giants have dra- drafted an inside linebacker, or I don't know if he plays outside or inside, I can't remember. They drafted a linebacker higher at a, at a spot that they drafted him higher than him. So like he was a lot, uh, Mr. Irrelevant last pick. Every draft they've drafted somebody higher than him. The past three drafts, all three of those guys have been cut, and Tay's they've kept Tay. Like they're tr- like they're trying to replace you in like in the yeah. league, and like they can't. Like you got to find a way to make make it to where they can. Oh yeah, it, that, I mean that's how I mean I kind of view college, just not as serious. Cause yeah. you're not uh, like right now. I'm not trying to feed a family, but they're still trying to bring somebody better than me in. Yeah, just no. I'm not trying to feed a family right now. I'm just playing ball. But at that level, you get cut. They, they're not they're like they're not going to cut somebody just because they got somebody better. They're just going to okay, you're second string now. It's all about putting the best product on the field. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's every sport, everything. But. I remember uh, I was watching one of his barbershop videos, and Ocho Cinco was in there, and he was talk, telling a story about his his first his rookie year in the league. He was in camp. And he was asking a vet like what route to run on, on a certain play and told him the wrong route to run. I was just thinking he went and ran the wrong route, got cussed out. And he's like, I learned from then on. It's it's me versus everybody. Oh yeah. That's oh, what's yeah. so different yeah. too. Same with baseball, I mean, they're all I mean, we're all boys, we all hang out, but at the end of the day, there's yeah. only certain spots at the top level. But I mean, you never wish bad upon anybody, ever. But it's it wild. is a grind. It's, it's a grind. every sport though. It's wild, man. All right, so we're going to do our last segment of the show, uh, Real Talk, Tear Talk. We were going to do some, we're, we're going to pivot here. We're going to do, because this will come out in about, you know, right around Halloween. We're going to do favorite Halloween candies. So from your three, two to one, favorite Halloween candies, wherever you, you know, growing up, right now, whatever you want to do. Who's your girlfriend? My fiance, sorry. <laughs> yeah, they're having a good night tonight. Going to Polly's, have a drink. Little girls' night. A drink. <laughs> I ain't paying for it. She needs money. She wants. <laughs> yeah, Holly. Is she getting nil money too? No, 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 no. Listen here now. When you start talking about growing up, you know, you know how it is. Finding. I know it is. Hell, my wife didn't have a job for four years. I know how it is. <laughs> and we got a dog. We all got to eat. Yes, sir. <laughs> all right. So we're speaking of eat. We're gonna do. Favorite Halloween candies. I'll go first. We'll go in reverse order to give you guys time to think. My tier three. Tier three is peanut M and M's. Tier two. Reese's Reese's pieces, not Reese's cups. Reese's pieces. Number one. Kit Kats, cold from the fridge. You said cut it off. I was about to say candy corn. <laughs> That's not. No, no. I can't. Candy corn is horrible. No. Peanut, I like it. Okay, but you don't like I it. I like at it. All? Okay, I gotta interject here. So we did this the other day. We were just talking in the office, and I did my one three two with the one. My number one were. Okay, we'll go 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 three to two. To I one. remember. Give, us, give it yours. Three. I think three was Snickers. Two was Reese cups, but like the specialty Reese cups because yep. they have more yep. peanut butter in them. But one were the pumpkin candy corn. Thank you. Really? Thank you. The pumpkin, I, like, look at, the, look at the look of disgust on that, his face. That's what's so good. good. The pumpkin candy corn. I can over the really regular like the ones. Because it's just condensed I sugar. Those. I, mean, I, yeah. like the ones. The re- I can't stand them. I don't know why, but I, like, I just cannot stand them. I hate them. I always knew it was fall time when I'd walk in my house, so I had a little cup of candy corn to sit on the kitchen. Mom did too. Mom did too. I did, nobody in our house touched it. Tate, I know you ate it. Tate, I, Tate. Yeah, when I when Tate. I then I figured out I didn't like it. <laughs> Never touched it again. And now I walk in and my wife has a nice little one with all the candy. Yeah, corn. there you oh, go. Well, mom, mom, mom will eat your body weight in candy corn. <laughs> <laughs> she loves candy corn. I, I do like too. It. Dude. I don't understand. No, I, I love can't it. either. There's just so many other options that taste so much better. Yeah, but it's it's so fall specific. Candy corn is the that, candy of the fall. That was my point. Is it something you can't get all the time? That's a great so it's great point. Like, you know, you feel like oh, this is I mean, in today's world, you can get it anytime you want. So do we need Amazon's to get it? Amazon's got to get around. <laughs> yeah, Amazon's. I think when we put this graphic out, we need to have like a overarching one for everybody. Candy corn. 
except for Tate, and then it could be That's awful. Alright, we have a picture of your mom on there though, because she loves candy corn. She does love candy corn. <laughs> tier three would be candy corn. Any kind. At least you put it in tier three. Uh, <laughs> tier two would probably be Snickers, I love them. And then tier one would probably be the white chocolate Hershey's. Ooh, the smaller that's ones, a great single call. packs. I, I think, didn't even think I about think those. I think those are really good. Also, the Hershey with almonds. The cookie, the cookies and cream ones, or just the white chocolate ones, solid the, ones. Yeah, the solid ones. All right, tier three for me. I'm gonna have to go to the cookies and cream Hershey's. Mm-hmm. Tier two, uh, Reese's Pieces. Bang. Reese's Pieces. Come on with One it. One is Twix. What? Twix? Dude, are you insane? The only Twix I use is Twix ice cream. I think it's better than the Snickers ice cream. Is you that the, talking about? Is that the, the candy ice cream like bars? The, those are I've seen those before. They're great. They used to have them in high school. Are they? Is, is Twix one where it's like left or right? Like choose which side you're on? Or are you a left or right guy? I would just be hold both them at the same time. <laughs> 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 so good. Oh, dude. You, are you a Twix? Oh, 100 percent. It's my favorite. It's my favorite chocolate or candy. You're of all time. It's amazing. It's it's so good, especially the ice cream. I don't want ice cream. Ice cream is phenomenal. You know, I it's love so I love almond joys too. I love almond joys are good. What? Really? But I feel like that's old a hot almond joys are good. No, I, I, really I like love almond, almond joys. I really I love like almond, almond joys. joys. I feel like it's an older person thing. Like I come around almond joys and every yeah, granddad's like, let me have some. Every kid's like, ew. Yeah, I love them. I do too. Great. I just love coconut. Dude, it's so good. Oh. All right. So speaking of favorite all time, I got a question for you because a lot of our memories are playing cards together. What poker hand are you never laying down pre-flop? No matter the the amount on the table. Well, the amount of money has to matter, but. Well, what's what's the one hand that? I'm never you, laying down. Yeah. It's hard for me to lay down any hand before I see a flop. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I mean, that's that's just I true. Agree with but this. I mean, seven two is worse hand in poker. Right. Seven two eight three. You throw a hundred dollars out there, I'll probably lay it down. It'd be really hard. It'd be tough. <laughs> but if a lot of people are in. That's probably equity. Yeah. I might have to call you definitely, see you flop. definitely You might see a 772 on the flop because everybody's in. I did that last week. Everybody was mad at me. I hit trip threes. But I had I had 7-3. It's a little bit better than 7-2. It's 7-3. All right, I oh, boy, and I put 50 bucks in. Two callers. I said, I got to see a flop. 50 bucks. There it went. 3-3. Three, three. And they all have ace-king, ace-jack, two overs. They're hammered. They're hammered. I'm just sitting back calling, calling. Last card comes the king. I know I have a beat. Somebody has to have it. All in. I'm just calling them all in. They're like, oh, he ain't got nothing. Call me. Have it. Just lay down three. They go nuts. That's I mean, gold. they are pissed off. <laughs> Dude, I'm just over there smiling. They're mad at me. Go, you wanted to play. Dude, I, I mean, that's yeah. like, when I think about you and I was playing cards, I always think about, like, I, I, whoever You don't was, know what I have. Never. You don't you, know what you, I have. He could have nine, two. He could have pocket rockets ready to roll. He's gonna play the exact same way every single time, and then when you when you have pocket rockets and then the flop comes three three and he turns over seven three, it's like, dude. I think it was like my second time playing poker, and everybody at the table knew that I hadn't played poker much to this point, and I had a seven two, and to that time, like I knew in my head they knew I didn't play that much, so I just start throwing chips in, knowing that they think I've got something. And one of them's like, all right, I'm going to go with him. So I, then I eventually went all in, and he was like, nope, never mind. <laughs> Just take it all back. <laughs> it was great. What you you want to play tonight? What you doing tonight? What, well, cards? Yeah, Where? I didn't play cards in a minute. Jake wants me to help him build a fire pit. Me and Carson are about to get a poker table at our house. It's, we got, it's I got 8.30. One. Y'all let me know. We'll play. We need to get a game going. We play sweats, too. Oh, sweats. Yeah, I ain't played sweats balls. in a minute. Man, when I was in school here, we'd be on the bus at the games. We'd bring four coolers, run cards nonstop. We didn't know how long we were going to be. We didn't care. We wanted the bus to go longer. Mm-hmm. <laughs> At Auburn, we had a rain out, and we played a doublehead on Friday. So I threw on Friday. Somebody else threw on Friday for the Friday, Saturday. We stayed up all night playing cards. We had guys owing money where they were selling PlayStations and TVs to pay guys. We, we, play, we didn't even sleep. You know how somebody oversleeps breakfast? We overplayed breakfast. We're getting knocks on our door. I, I, I'm not kidding. We're getting knocked on the door going, hey, you're five minutes late for breakfast. And we're like, it's 8.30 <laughs> in the morning, and we have not slept at all. Dude, we still have a game to play that day. Oh, at least you weren't throwing. No, I wasn't done that if I was done. I'm smarter than that. But our starting catcher was in there. 
Dude, that is gold. <laughs> Oh my god. I mean, I, I'm serious. I mean, we got guys scrambling around like, oh, I'm going to sell my TV when I get back. I'll sell my PS4. I got my Xbox up for sale. I mean, oh, oh, oh. I'm not talking 100. I'm, I'm talking 6,000. I mean, for a college kid, that's a lot. Oh, yeah. For anybody, that's a lot. I, I got... mean, for anybody, it's a lot. When you're talking about college baseball players owing $6,000 in more than 24 hours of playing. That's absolutely yeah, People over sleep alarms, we over play alarms. They put their car keys on the table. Goodness gracious, dude. Oh, man. I hadn't played a minute. Shoot, I had a guy with me $10,000 this freshman year. I didn't make him pay me a dime, though. He what got, a guy. What he, a good guy. He, he, got, he, got, he got pretty rough. He, he took it too hard. but He owed me 5000 for cards. He goes, hey, double or nothing, man, I'm really good. Okay, I took the Raiders, he took the Patriots. That's back when Tom Brady was with the Patriots. 21 scott and double money. No way. <laughs> first, first quarter. You were there? Was I was there? in Miami. Oh, I was in the National Championship, too. Let's go. I didn't know Me and my wife just drove there to uh, Arizona, where spring training is. Next night, we moved into our apartment. Took a flight to Indianapolis. That's she was awesome. there all week. We, that that's nice. where she got to meet Quavo. Mm, okay. And she was very excited. I didn't know who he was. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. This man has about a hundred thousand dollars worth of chains. You gotta get high walking behind him. Yeah, <laughs> he's hanging out with two football players I knew. They're like, "What's up, Taylor? What's up? Like, hey, how you doing? Thinking he's a recruit or something." And, and, my, and my fiance's like, "My fiance's jaw dropped." I'm like, what the "Hell's wrong with you? You know that?" That's Quavo, baby. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "All right, let's go meet Quavo. You mind taking a picture of my wife?" Oh yeah, come on, come on. He was he was awesome. That's hilarious, dude. I love it. Oh, That's man. Cold. Golly, dude. Yeah, that, yeah, that was good. That was a long time coming. It needed to happen. Oh, I wish dude. we were in Miami after that game. But I'm going to tell you this. Georgia fans are the worst fans in America. We're worse than Alabama. We're worse than, worse than Florida. Yeah, worse than LSU. Not Tennessee fans. Uh, have, have we're worse than seen, Tennessee. Okay. Speaking of Tennessee, have, we, have y'all seen the video of like, the guy in the car? Just the redneck yes. Tennessee fan that's like ball and starts the, rapping. Oh yeah, we have to throw that up on, the, on he, the episode. You know he like tweeted out like saying it was okay for him to be twenty six dating a sixteen year old. Dude, like the Tennessee fans have like adopted this guy. They love it. They love it. Oh, they're fired He's up. He's the worst rapper I've ever heard. Like someone's into him. It's, like this it's, is it's, it's yeah. Bad. He has he has a smoky tattoo. I like saw a jack smoky, smoky. But like a jacked up smoky tattoo. Yeah. Yep. His entire chest. If they broke, don't fix it. They're winning. Oh, hey, if they beat Alabama, he might be the mascot next year. <laughs> he might. He, the hell, he might be the mascot when they roll in here. <laughs> he might be rolling the flag across the field. Did you, did you see that so, so I, was, I, was chirp, I was chirping at Tennessee's collective guys the other day, the president or whatever. They're like, oh, you better be careful. We're going to send all this to whatever this guy's name is. You can make a rap about you. I was oh like, my God, gosh, please. please. I was like, please make a rap about you. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to DM him just to piss him off. You should. <laughs> make something about no, me. but Georgia fans are serious the worst for this reason. Even when I was in school here, we won the national championship and lost in 17 Jake's freshman year. Mm-hmm. But you ask any guy I've been watching for a long time, you go back 10 years ago, if you said we'd have won a national championship and we're 6-0 and after beating Auburn at home, everybody would have signed that piece of paper. Am I right? Yeah. Everybody would. They don't care how you win. Look at last year. When we rolled to Missouri, we stumbled. We walk out there to win. Thank God. Come back and roll Auburn, right? Unranked team. Last year, Alabama was number one. They rolled into unranked team A&M. They didn't get out of it live. They took a loss. You know what I'm saying? We have not done that yet. We've been humble. Very valid point. We've been humble. We've had stumbles. But, man, I think we got humble with Kent State and Missouri. Bounce back, cover against Auburn. Beat them by 40 at home. Jake tried tried to tell me that it wasn't that bad. Like, it wasn't. It was a pretty close game. What? I was like, buddy, I know Tyler's on the team, but I got in the game. It was a beat down. (laughs) Come on, that's son. What game? Auburn. Auburn. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That Missouri game was a war. There's yeah. a war. And I'll tell you what, that, that place is very underrated as far as that place was rocking. atmosphere goes. We oh, got we, dude. we we line up for the first and out. I couldn't hear. Stetson's It comes up like why are we snapping the ball? Like nobody we moved. can't hear you. <laughs> yeah, but if you think I mean before the game you almost got in a fight with them, right? You had oh, all yeah. oh, I told this story Here's the thing, you never wake a sleeping dog. No matter who it is. We did not match their energy. They you came know out exactly. swinging. Swinging. They're deep, they're deep Dude, I'll tell you what, dude. They were 
They're good folks. They're D1 they're, football. They're a good, they're yeah, a good football team. Yeah, it's an SEC team. football team. Exactly. Exactly. I mean, they're like, not picking me we, up to go play. Hey, if we come out again this weekend like we did that, it's going to be the same situation. Yeah, if Vandy, I don't Vandy care. should have beat Ole Miss. Mm -hmm. They just they couldn't outlast them. Yeah. I'll tell you what, they're having that Missouri student section right behind our entire bench. Oh, my God. Dude. Oh, my place God. Was bumping. That place was going. And it was like they should have been Especially like after we – I fall started. That place got louder than I'd heard it that whole game. That was like the third quarter. Oh. I was like, you are kidding me. So I've been to every Georgia football game for the past five years now, even on the road. The loudest stadium I've ever heard was 2018 Jordan Harris Stadium. Mm -hmm. Miko Harmon muffed a oh, punt man. right before halftime. I was in the family section. My feet were coming off the ground shaking. I was in the student section. And it's because the year before, it was the swag surfing. We played it at home. They played it at their house. Yeah. When they, Miko muffed that yeah. punt, scoop and score. Scoop and score, 14 nothing. They played swag surfing. I was in the what student section. Rocking. That place, I thought it was going to fall. <laughs> that place gets crazy. It was louder than LSU. Yeah, I would agree with that. I was at the game. Which, I mean, I, I've heard. I mean, LSU's kind of been downhill atmosphere because it used to be like the loudest ever. Yeah. But them cages don't come out to night games. You go down there at oh, a night game, ooh, that's up. That's yep. They're raging cages down there. That's on my bucket list go to a night game at LSU. I want to you have it. to make sure they're good, though. Oh, yeah. This year. I'll never forget my first call with Coach O. He calls me. I'm in our school yes, cafeteria. Go Tigers. I don't understand where you're saying. Go Tigers. Uh, you can get in. What is it? Uh, what's your favorite food your mom makes? And I was like, what? I just kept saying yes, sir, because I didn't understand a word he said. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yep, that's it. All right, appreciate it. His interview about getting uh, getting dropped was hilarious. A seventeen million dollar buyout? Uh, oh yeah. What? When and where you want me to go? Absolutely. Yeah, one hundred percent. Absolutely. One hundred percent. You can not leave for that much money. Who would? Absolutely. I saw Coach Luke the other day. We got to get him on here, by the way. No, we don't. I saw. Oh, we definitely get him on here. No, we're not. I saw him last night, and he goes. No, we're not. He goes. How was, how was practice today? I was like, it was good. What'd you do today? Play golf. I was like, you talk. Let's yeah. talk about NIL deals. NIL deals. Which, which, uh, which Tennessee you? has a quarterback. Five-star commitment. As soon as he steps on college campus, $8 million. Mm -hmm. Holy. <laughs> Can you imagine? High schooler. Dude, what are you doing? Uh, Kid just started driving a car. He's about to step on the no, car. No, he ain't driving a car. He's going to drive the car in Tennessee. <laughs> Three cars. Eight million? <laughs> if you have a car, you stay out of the week. Maybe drive it. Drive it. Well, you know. Eight uh, million dollars. Oh my what's gosh. the quarterback at App State? Chase Bryce. Chase Bryce. He got an NIL deal with a limo company. Oh, yeah, I saw that. And they would pick him up, take him to class, pick him up again, take him to the next class, pick him up, take him to the facility. So he rode around campus in a limo. A limo or a Lamborghini? A limo. Well, well, a Michigan offensive lineman got a limbo. If only, man. See, I think it was uh, Ball State. Ball State did a team wide deal with Manscaped or something. No way. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. <Ball> <laughs> That's great. Hey, I guarantee we all know some guys that could use it. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, South Being a locker room with dudes, that's what's nasty. did something with like sacks, the, the underwear, you know, just the, the cocks. Yeah. So, nice. Sacks. That's what we talked about. What did I talk about? Uh, was it? Oh, yeah, Reese is, is doing a deal with guys. last name is Reese. There's like 21 of them, 22 of them they're doing deals with. Well, look at A&M. They got number one recruiting class, all the money. That money's only coming from three oh, or four money. guys. Oh. Oh, at my at God. some point, if A&M's not producing, they're going to say fuck that. Well, get this. I mean, these guys are going to transfer because the money oh, has to end. Absolutely. Well, but the, the, the top, one of the top boosters for A&M, Said that he'd be more than willing to pay Jimbo's eighty-six million dollar buyout. That's crazy. eighty-six million dollars. I would tell him. I would say, give it to me, and I am gone. I will, you will never talk to me again. <laughs> where would you go? Anywhere. Okay. I have eighty-six million dollars. Okay. I can go wherever I want. All right. If I gave you eighty-six million, what are you doing? I'm moving to the middle of nowhere in Wyoming. Pretty good answer. Sure. What are you gonna do? You gonna get bored? What are you gonna do? Can't hunt every day. There's a hunting season. Shut. Sure. I'd find enough, so I'd buy something to keep me busy. What would you do? What would I do? Yeah, $86 million to quit baseball right now. What are you doing? I mean, I'm probably going to Florida. Probably going to buy a bunch of condos, so I still have investment coming in. Cash flow. It's a grown man. You know? I'll probably buy a bunch of housing. A bunch of beach houses. Love beach. Probably 
Maybe a ten million dollar lake house. Why not? A boat. <laughs> Why not? Yeah. I'm probably building a golf course. Mm. You sick? Uh, Just for the heck of it. I don't know. I'd probably. You know what I'd do? Buy a bunch of. I'd buy a bunch of land, high fence, and make people pay me twenty five thousand dollars to come kill. Hey, I'm in on that. Not twenty five thousand, but I'm in on that. Well, maybe, 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 ten, maybe ten grand. So I have a buddy down in Texas that owns a hat company, and he has a high fence area, and they had a buck that got paid twenty five thousand dollars to come kill. Oh, I blew it. That's a buck, yeah, man. I've been there. It's just, you sit in a blind, right when you get there, a truck comes up. You have know, a uh, truck hitch. Mm -hmm. It's two feeders. Once that feeder goes off, that truck pulls off. As soon as that truck's pulling off, I mean, he's almost running over the deer. They're on you. Really? Pick which one you want. Really? There's a price tag to him. Mm -hmm. He's five grand, he's five grand, he's 10 grand, he's two grand. Interesting. Hey, you still have to mount it. That's just to kill it. You still have to process it and mount it. Mm -hmm. You gotta pay to be there or just paying for the deer? No, you gotta pay to be there. Like, oh. if you, especially, yeah. like, let's say, holy moly. There, there, I know there's some places that have enough land that, like, you may see that deer that day, you may not. And then you pay for housing, you pay for this, pay for that. Normally it's included, normally there's a nice lodge on there, yeah. yeah. Just come on down here, 2000 a night. We'll get your crown roll set up, it costs 60 bucks. We'll get your lodges set up. Yeah. A couple hundred bucks, maybe. Yeah. Wake up next morning and spend five grand on a deer. Oh, easily. Living life, baby. Easy. I promise you that money ain't hurting, ain't hurting them. Like, I love duck hunting, and I do it every year, and all I see is Woody's here. I got a couple buddies up north, I go up there and shoot green hats. But I got buddies that go to North Dakota, Canada. I mean, they're going everywhere to shoot a stinking duck. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. And let me tell you this, the game warden, they care about one thing, it's the duck. You shoot the wrong duck, you're hammered. They'll take your truck, they'll yeah. take your gun, your license for a year. Oh yeah. And you don't pay 10 grand to go across the country and kill a duck. I'm just fine with my woodies and There's jag a, walls. I can't think of the guy's name. I think he lives on Lake Oconee. That has killed every game animal in the world. Mm. That includes like every animal. My brain African. can't even function thinking about that. That's insane. Beef a lot of animals. He got an animal animal soon, oh, as soon as you walk in his house, there's an elephant. That's insane. It's a nice house warming gift. That'll fly. That'll piss Peter off real yeah. quick. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. It was bad. It's killing an elephant. I've heard it's like 5K a shot. Like the bullet. That's how big, the, that's how big it is. Oh, yes, this long. You, oh, yeah, if you don't really? hit it right and you got to shoot huh? another one, really? there's even more money. And you got to shoot it like right here at the chest. That's it. There is, because all the spots going to kill it instantly. I was listening to a YouTube fall. video. Dude missed the shot, knocked the elephant down, didn't kill it. The guy was like, shoot it again. The guy was like, I'm just killing on my own. Like, I'm not shooting this thing again because he's like talking about how much money it was a bullet. The guy was like, shoot it again. Bam. <laughs> Added on to the shot. So yeah, he paid even you. more. Yes, I. Hell, I'll be there like, ooh, one more time. <laughs> Please, you can go another one if you want. Yeah, Here, I'll give you my own bullet. It's still going to cost you. <laughs> Where do you buy an elephant bullet? I mean, just like go to like Walmart, go to the gun section. And I have the whole shelf section. is just a... <laughs> I guarantee you, with, with the things we're going through right now, you can't find them. I do reloads myself for my guns. I can't find the primers anywhere. Really? Put a price on it, still can't get it. Primers are the hardest thing to find. Ben's coming across 50 cal bullets. Ben is? Uh, he got, have you seen that 50 cal he got? No. He got a 50 cal. I wonder how he's coming across bullets. Ben, ben having a 50 cal is not a good idea. At all. <laughs> I mean, I don't know what he's going to shoot with it. But he I might, might walk, walk in butts, walk in butts one day and just carry that thing around. I mean, ben might shoot his house with it one day. Just see if his house has good foundation. <laughs> Like, yeah. I don't want to know what Ben is going to shoot with his I love that. <laughs> Hey, we're, yeah, we're headed to Foxworthy's house to hunt, and he's in my truck. Mm -hmm. And he has to piss. I'm like, dude, we're five minutes away. You can hold it. He's like, man, you got to pull over. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you have to, you're just hold, we're five minutes. And he's like, dude, pull over. I said, fuck, pull over. I pull over. He's squatting on the highway, <laughs> sitting. And I'm just like, man, if you get this on my rail, I will shoot you. <laughs> I mean, cars are flying. I'm not even pulled off the highway. I'm like half on half on. I'm thinking this man is going to take a leak and we're gone. <laughs> and so what's the next question? I know dudes keep toilet paper, don't they? <laughs> <laughs>
You're just in luck. Don't know how long they've been there. They're mushed up like this, but look. Oh Go ahead. <laughs> Please throw it in the ditch. Please oh, let her. <laughs> he called me one night. He was like, he was like, hey, hey, look at this. Sits this phone right here. Shoots a deer right out of his window of the retreat. Not the retreat. What's it called? Where he used to live. Not the retreat. Uh, where he used to live. I don't know. It's like in a. It wasn't Icon. Mm -mm. It's 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 out. It's farther on Millage. Icon ain't on Millage. It's not Icon. It wasn't Icon. Where did he used to live? Uh, well, that's besides the point. He well, you know. Charlie was out there there by the retreat. I don't know. It's the, what's it called? I don't know. Athens Ridge. Yeah, that's exactly Athens where it was. Ridge, that's yeah. Exactly where it was. Yeah, that is where he lived. And he was shoot. He shot a dove right outside of his window. <laughs> From his sitting well, in his house. Time with you. We had the best house in college. Dude, dude y'all's house was unbelievable. Well, I drive by now. Who'd you live with? Jake, Prime, and Charlie Warner. Good old 49er. And yeah, Eli. Eli was in there a little yeah, bit. Yeah, Eli was in there for one year. Dude, that place, was, that place was awesome. He did. Thursday nights come over. Prom's would bring over food. Oh, we'd cook every Thursday. Man. Football team come over and eat. It was a blast. Y'all were, were too. A couple streets up from the baseball field? Oh, yeah, yeah Rocky's old house. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just I, moved into it. I dropped it. Jake off there one day. Like, we went to Indianapolis for like some pre, like the draft. Mm -hmm. Or not pre combine. The, the, the year before combine. Yeah, yeah. 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 So we dropped him off that house. It was like, yeah, that was our house. Spot. 422 yeah. University Drive. Yeah, that's a good spot. Great memories. Yeah, y'all were, were too good to be my first semester here. That changed my life. Y'all have a pool table in your basement? Oh, no. we did. I've but definitely been there. Not in the basement. We, it's, it's not just, a basement, but it's in the dining room. Yeah. We had our waiters hung up on the wall, decoys, pool I, table, I think I, ping pong table. I think I went, I've been to that house on a visit. Y'all's house on a visit. Probably did. A lot of people came. did. I was the only one drinking yeah. <laughs> The daggum uh, Halloween parties there. Oh, oh they were a blast. Oh, yeah. Who's the guy that transferred Luke? What? He transferred Luke to Illinois. Oh, Luke I've Ford. seen that guy. Animal. Crazy thing. Animal, dude. God. I've seen him stone cold like four beers and his head's bleeding. I'm like, dude, how do you explain this? Like, this can't be fun. Like, dude, that is fun. How, how do you explain this? I do it a free. How do you walk in a trainer and go, like, can you take my head out? <laughs> I tripped and fell. Yeah, you really tripped and fell right there. Like somebody puts you on your head? <laughs> a beer can did. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, we had great, great memories though. Great memories. That porch, man. Yep. That porch was where it was at. Well, brother, appreciate you being on big yep. time. You and dog, good luck with the arm, good luck with the season. Thank you. Cheering for it, buddy. Yeah, hopefully you get to see in the bigs the big time. Mm. Appreciate you, brother. Yeah, appreciate you all. Oh, shit.